joining me, I want to show you a really cute baby shower cake. This one I'm going to call Moon and Stars. Uh, so basically what I've got here is a cake that I went ahead and covered in fondant. This is a new fondant that we are starting to sell at Sweetwise.com. It's called Dream Fondant. And honestly, there are a lot of fondants out there that I've really, really liked. But there's, it seems like there's always been something missing from it. And I think this one, to me, has everything that I've been missing. This one is kind of a hybrid fondant. Um, it's kind of a blend of modeling chocolate and fondant, but it's not. It's not sticky at all. And I'm going to show you some of that later on when I roll some out here. Um, it's just got so many distinct characteristics that you're really, really going to love it. Mainly, I love the feel of it and the taste of it. So let's just go ahead and go with the design, and um, then I'll show you the fondant in a little bit. Um, basically, what I wanted to do, again, I'm calling it Moon and Stars. So I wanted to do a nice big moon topper, like the moon is really low up on top of the baby. But I didn't have a mold for that, so I kind of created one. I just took a cake pan and one, my six inch cookie cutter. You could probably use like another um, cake pan, like a six inch cake pan. And when I, before I molded my melting wafers in here, I just taped this down really, really tight so that it wouldn't shift at all. And that's basically gonna make that crescent moon shape. So let me make sure that I can turn this out really gently. I want to crack this all. There we go. So that came out nicely. So what I want to do, I'm just going to set this down really gently because you don't want to snap it by hitting it too firmly on the surface. I'm going to, I went ahead and made a hole. I'm working on a dummy cake here. So I made a hole with my skewer ahead of time so it's a little bit easier to slide in. I want to make sure, especially if you're using real cake because there's quite a bit of weight to this, that this is going to sink down and you want to use the sharpened end it's going to sink down into your drum so that it can really grab and not just fall over in the weight of the cake. Um, with me using a dummy, that's not as much of an issue, but if you're, when you're using it on real cake, make sure that you do that. So what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of glue, which is basically just more of the Sweetwise melting wafers, all over this stick. I'm not going to be shy with this because it's going to be on the back and it's not going to be seen. Make sure that slides down in the cake, okay? Now I'm just going to put it on. Let me flip this. That's the pretty side. I want that, that to show. So I'm going to put it on the back here. And just really make sure that's making good contact with the actual moon. Now you could just set that there for a while, or you could put it in the refrigerator for 15 or 20 minutes. Um, just because I want to move along here, I have some freeze spray. Um, this is food grade. You want to make sure that you are using a food grade, especially for something that's going to be eaten, because a lot of the ones, like people will sometimes think they can use a computer spray, like the duster, and that's just not the same thing. It's really not food safe. So quick spritzes. And just after a few minutes of waiting, this seems really secure. So I'm gonna go ahead and lift this up. And go ahead and set it in the hole that I made. Again, if you are um, using real cake, make sure this point goes down into the board that it's sitting on so that it really supports that weight. So there's my moon. Now let me work on the baby. And I'm going to show you a really fun mold that I love. Here's one that I made ahead of time. So basically what I'm using is this First Impressions mold. Um, it's really uh, flexible silicon, which I really love because you can really get tons of great detail out of these molds. I always say this one kind of looks like a flying monkey because it's hard to tell what it is from the other side. But basically all I do is I have gum paste here. This is the Choco Pan gum paste. Great brand. And I just tinted it lightly with a little bit of the copper flesh tone of Americolor. So I'm just going to knead it together to get it nice and pliable. You want to make sure that you're getting all these seams out of here. That's really why you're working it. Because you don't want to end up with seams across the actual baby. So just getting it nice and soft. That's feeling pretty good. All right, now knowing this mold pretty well, I know that most of the detail is going to be down in here where the face is that I want to get. 
and then this hand right here, which is a little bit easier to get to because it's up close on the surface right here. So mainly my big concern is getting down into the face where I can get the details of that ear and the face. So I'm really gonna kind of make like a little bit of a more narrow pointed area to kind of stick in there first. And you can see how flexible this mold is. It's not gonna lose its shape. So just really give it a lot of pressure getting it into that cavity and you're gonna push, push, push with your hands. And then once you feel like it's mostly in there, you can just kind of pull off the excess. And then I go back with a small rolling pin and push even more. Make sure this rolling pin isn't sticking to your gum paste because you don't want it pulling it back out of the mold. Okay. At that point, you're just going to kind of clean up the excess that's on the surface. And wherever you see the actual line of the detail of the mold, you'll kind of work that with your finger so that it has a nice, clean look to it. All right, so see I pulled off a little bit too much here, so I want to make sure I push into that. And you can even fill a little bit more. This is the back side, so that's not going to be seen. Now, even though this is gum paste and it's pretty firm, one thing you want to be aware of is because I was just kneading it, it is a little bit flexible. So if I were to pull this right back out right now, it would stretch just slightly, and I don't want to give it a distorted look. This one I would like to set about 15 minutes. This one I did before I pulled out, so we're going to go ahead and work with this one that's already finished. So before we finish off the baby, I'm going to show you how to uh, make the blanket, and we'll put all that together. I'm going to set this one aside to set up. We'll use him for something else. Um, this is a blanket that I actually made probably three hours ago. This is one of the things that I really wanted to point out about this fondant. Again, it's called Dream Fondant. You can get it at Sweetwise.com. It's one of the most amazing fondant products I've ever encountered. Um, this, like I said, has been rolled out for three hours, and look, nothing cracks. It's just amazing. Here's another one. I, I rolled it out at the same time, and this is just smooth so you can see it a little bit better, and nothing cracks. It's just seriously the most amazing product I've ever encountered. Tastes great too. Um, so let me just show you really quick how to make the blanket. This is actually um, called Kiss of Cream is this shade. It's kind of like a creamy white. So it's not that dark ivory that you might be accustomed to. Um, it's just a little bit softer. So I just want to show you the difference. This is called Clean White, the, the color I'm working with now. Some fun names in this brand. So let me just pull a little bit of the white out. And while I wrap this up, you can see really quickly, it's like, see, this is just like a creamy white. It's like barely ivory. It's nice and soft. A lot of people had been requesting that, so instead of the darker ivory. So that's what we've got here. So here's another really great thing about this. There's something about the, the, the guy that makes this, the, the plant manager, he's like a genius with fondant. But he's got like the right amount of gums, the right amount of chocolate, the right amount of sugars. Everything is just right. I'm not even going to need powdered sugar or cornstarch down here to roll this out, and it's not going to stick. Look how nice that is. So all I did with this, and again, I could still use this blanket if I want to because it doesn't crack at all, but I just want to kind of show you the difference between the white and the kiss of cream. And I'm just going to go over with my pattern. Just roll over it once so the pattern doesn't become muddy. And then I can cut along the lines in a rectangle or square or whatever shape you want. This one I took a tool and did a little bit of a fringe too. This one I'll leave straight. And then to bring out the highlights of it, I just dusted a little bit with some Super Pearl dust. That gives it a little bit of a sheen, kind of a nice shimmer to it. So then what you can do is you can pick it up and lay it over the baby. So what I'm going to do first is position the baby on the cake where I want. And just to make sure things don't slide off, I'm going to put a little bit of just clear piping gel for my glue and put him down right where I want him. And then you can have the blanket 
positioned however you want to. You can kind of make this a little bit wavy and then maybe pull the corner back a little bit like he's just been tucked in. Oh, I like his hand showing, so we'll expose that a little bit more. Okay, and then one final detail before I do the border. I made these stars ahead of time. This is like a little three-piece set of different size stars that I really love. And all I did with those, once I cut them out, this is just the regular um, dream fond and I didn't add anything to it, but it holds its shape pretty well. And all I did was put a little bit of the clear piping gel and then I added some of the white sanding sugar and the edible glitter just to give it a little bit of sheen. So what I'm gonna do is again, piping gel is my glue, just a little dot on the back and just put them in random places on this moon. Just hold them a second so it doesn't slide. And I've got some of the large and the medium. You can do as many of these or as few as you want. I'm going to add a few more here and then I'm going to show you the border. So last star going on. Kind of position it where you want it. I'm going to do it coming off a little bit. Okay, let me show you this border really quick. I'm just kind of doing some puffy clouds around. And one thing you don't want to do is just make little balls. That doesn't look like a cloud. It's not very natural and fluffy. Um, it's kind of everybody's first tendency to want to do that. So. I'm just kind of loosening up, again, some of the Dream Fondant here. This is the clean white. Um, and I am going to start with like a ball shape, just kind of random size. But instead of leaving it round, I'm going to kind of give it a little bit of just natural. I don't, you don't want any like distinct divots or lines like that. But you just want it kind of random bumps and movement on there. And then again, the glue I use is just the clear piping gel. So I'm going to get it on here and then probably shape it a little bit more. And then again, a little bit more shaping here and there just to give it a little bit more of a natural cloud look. And then I'm going to do a little bit one smaller, kind of the same action. I'm just kind of squeezing it a little bit here and there to give it random shape. Again, just, you can use royal icing or buttercream, whatever you want to kind of connect these. But the clear piping gel is just so handy. It's always right there in a tube for me. All right, so then you can just kind of continue that all the way around. And um, if you want to, you can even finish it. This is a little bit of the pearl spray. I love this in the can. If you want to finish that with a little bit of pearl spray and it gives it a little bit of sheen, that even looks more like a cloud. So that's pretty much it. Again, this is my moon and stars cake. I was using the dream fondant, which I really, really love. So I hope if you're doing some kind of a baby shower party that you will give this one a try. It's a lot of fun. Thanks for watching.